So you have a park where you have brought dinosaurs back to life that will forever cement your name in the history books. But you're also going to be remembered as a pauper if you don't have a slick way to sell your guests a souvenir baseball cap. Let's talk about how we can use amenities to squeeze every single dollar possible out of our guests. Amenities in Jurassic World have to be managed, and while they are not as complicated as taking care of your dinosaurs, I haven't seen a really good tutorial in-game of how to do it, so I want to break down what you need to do with your amenities to be able to skyrocket your profits. Before we look at the amenity configurations, I want to make sure it's clear how important these shops are. Dinosaurs steal the show here, and rightly so, it's a game called Jurassic World, but they overshadow the other aspects of park management. Each dinosaur has a clearly labeled appeal rating. Then your cumulative appeal rating is shown off front and center when you click on your park star rating, but this number does not directly give you your star rating. Your income gives you your park rating. And if we click over to finances, we see that most of our income is coming from, wait for it, amenities. We are making over half our money from our amenities here. And my amenities in this park are not even very well optimized. Look at this, this is terrible coverage. Now let's talk about how you can best set up these little money factories. Amenities come in three varieties, food, drinks, and shopping, all of which are equally important to your guests because just like in our real life materialistic society, the pangs of hunger and dehydration hurt just as much as potentially missing out on an officially branded action figure. Amenities also come in three different sizes and with a huge variety of different configuration modules, all of which require advanced research and most of which you will just have to mouse past to be able to find the old reliable ones that you unlocked earlier on. My experience is that outside of the first three amenities you build at the very beginning of your park, then the small amenities are a complete waste of time and space. To be able to service medium to large crowds of guests in the park, you would have to build an actual continuous chain of these small amenities all along your paths. The medium amenities do way better and I found these to be completely sufficient to be able to reach the max star rating for all of the challenges and chaos theory missions that I have attempted so far. I don't want to leave the large amenities out in the cold though because they are capable of generating absolutely enormous profits. Let's talk about how. When building a new amenity you want to find an area of the park where their guests are going to have high demand for whatever the amenity is providing. If you lay the amenity right up against the path then you will get a projected guest count of people who will want to shop at the amenity if it was built there. Without getting too picky, just throwing this in the middle of a dark red zone will give you an extremely profitable shop. Once your new shop is built, don't just move on. You need to configure this to make sure that you are getting all the profits that you so rightly deserve. What the game is doing here is it is looking at the ratio of the different types of guests who are shopping at this location, and then it is giving you targets that you need to hit in exactly the same way as the dinosaurs have comfort targets for the environment in their enclosures. You need to get these sliders out of the red, but you don't get any further benefit the farther into the gray you push the slider. Hmm, there's probably a deeper lesson in how you manage guests the same way as the wild animals. Well, anyway, going to the configure tab here, we see that different offerings and different modules all have different costs and impact on the business. The brain dead way of configuring this is quickly mousing over every single option and seeing which one is going to generate the highest profit and then repeating until that bottom blue number doesn't get any bigger. Now we are making more than three times as much as we were initially. And if we zoom out, we see that guests are much happier with their access to souvenir shops within this zone of the park. If you really want to micromanage the configuration of your shops, then what you want to do is get each one of these sliders outside of the red, but just barely. Otherwise, you are effectively paying for more of a service than you actually need at this location. Now, there is an art to this because different modules that promise to provide the exact same thing can cost different amounts, and that is why I actually prefer to do just the mouse over method to be able to save time. Now that we know how to properly configure all of our amenities, we need to talk about choosing the right size of amenity and figuring out where to place them. But first, if this video has been helpful, then leave a like and let me know in the comments if there's another game system that you would like to see a video breakdown on just like this one. Over in this corner of the map, we have a great side-by-side -side comparison of the three different sizes of amenities available. These have all been configured fairly well, so it's showing what they are able to do if they are running at a high level. We see that they have all actually maxed out their guest capacity. This is because this is a late game park, five-star appeal rating. Our total guest count, I believe we can see here from the 
arrival point. We have almost three and a half thousand guests in the park, so the crowds are very dense. The small amenity is eating up one unit of power, is serving about 200 guests, and it is making $18,000. There's actually 200 guests that are falling in the overcrowded category. This is because this gift shop is absolutely packed to the gills, and the running cost with the two modules comes out to about $10,000. We can also see that the amenity coverage is absolutely abysmal. Guests would like to see another gift shop literally right around the corner from this one. It is only covering people within this small section that is shaded blue. Jumping over to the medium amenity, we see that it is sapping up three power. It is servicing about 400 guests, which is roughly double what the small amenity was doing, and only 123 guests are feeling overcrowded. These overcrowded guests do give you a penalty, and I believe that will come out in your park's transportation rating. Let me know in the comments if that's not actually accurate. We see also that the profit is close to double what the small amenity was able to provide, and also that the amenity coverage from this is much larger. You would be able to space out your medium amenities farther apart and still be able to paint all of your paths in blue. Finally, coming to the large amenity, we are looking at the cream of the crop, taking up five power, servicing 750 guests. We still have 335 guests who feel overcrowded here, which is incredible. We have such dense crowds in this area. The large amenity is making more than double what the medium amenity was making, and this is because the operating costs are about the same regardless of the size of the amenity. It of course depends on the modules that you install, but here the large amenity is able to service a much larger crowd for the same operating cost as the medium amenity, and that is why you are able to make more than double what the medium amenity was bringing in. Your coverage here, this is for providing food, is also much much larger. So if we imagine that this path was extending off this way, you would be able to space another large amenity, say all the way over here, and that should should still fill in all this rest of the path blue. Because the large amenity is most efficient in terms of power and running costs compared to how many guests it is able to service, it is able to pass on those savings over to you in the terms of profit. So it's going to have the highest profit margin of any of the amenities. This is, of course, if you are able to provide a large enough crowd to have it running at maximum capacity. So if you are taking your park well into the late game and building just an enormous sprawl, then I highly recommend taking all of the amenity research options here. Otherwise, I think that you can get away with just this first tier and having the medium amenities and the basic modules unlocked. That's the full breakdown on amenities. For completeness sake, I should say that you are capable of changing the cosmetics of the different shops, though you do not have as much freedom as other games such as Planet Coaster, which came out by the exact same developers. I like using some of the enclosure terrain options to be able to beautify the zones around my shopping centers to give them a distinct look, and I also like grouping the different amenities together so that just from a high visual overview, I can see that these are taking care of the amenities within this zone. But you don't necessarily have to do that. As long as you have solid coverage of the amenities for your guests, you can have the different types of amenities scattered however you like. Also note these beautification features just look pretty. They don't actually impact the performance of the shops or how happy your guests are in the park. Hopefully these tips will help you pump up your star rating and rake in gobs of cash. I've got more Jurassic World videos in the works, so make sure to subscribe if you want to be able to see those when they come out. Till then, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.